Now, will you listen to this? This is another verse that they base soul sleep on. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave whither thou goest. Well, absolutely, there's not. Because when you put this old body that can hold a hammer and can use its brain to study or to perform some mental chore, when you put that body in the grave, it's not going to be doing those things. In other words, this is the place you're going to make your decision. But the body has come not to an end, but the body will probably disintegrate, made up of about 16 elements, and the soil's made up of about 16 elements, and that body will go right back into the soil. Dust thou art, under dust shalt thou return. He says that concerning the body. But the Spirit will go to the Creator. In other words, you're a person, and you're going to have to answer to God. Now, he'll come to that in the 12th chapter, so that this does not teach soul sleep. It's the viewpoint of the man under the sun, and that is the thing of it. Now, in verse 11, oh, he deals with social injustice and the minority groups and the masses. Listen to him now. I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong. Neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill. But time and chance happeneth to them all. Life is a great lottery. And if you happen to be born black, you're going to have your problems. And if you're born white, you're going to have your problems. If you're born yellow, you're going to have your problems. It's all chance. Nothing you can do about it. That's the whole thought here. Therefore... The thing to do is to sort of juggle the thing together and let's divide it because we're not going to be here very much longer. May I say to you, what a viewpoint of life this is. And let's move on down. For man also knoweth not his time as the fishes that are taken in an evil net and as the birds that are caught in the snare. So are the sons of man snared in an evil time when it falleth suddenly upon them. And this comes right back to that materialistic philosophy. And that is the thing we mentioned the other day, that when you get on a plane on Friday afternoon, as I've done now many times, filled with men, men with briefcases, going home. They're coming here to Southern California. Some have been in Dallas, some in Kansas City, some in Chicago, some in Seattle. Now they're coming home. And they sit there. They're not afraid. Why? Because they have a fatalistic viewpoint of life. Well, one of these men said to me one day, we went through some turbulence. And he says, well, you know, if it's going down, it'll go down. If your number comes up, there's nothing you can do about it. So he just sat back, gritted his teeth. And that's the way he faced life. Man, just like a fish caught in a net. Oh, what an awful viewpoint. That is the worst kind of fatalism. And that is a philosophy we've considered. But the do-gooder has to come to that, you see. There's no other explanation for him. And therefore, this wisdom have I seen also under the sun, and it seemed right 